Redditors who witnessed a murder. What is your story? At a pub about two years ago. Large group out the front arguing. Then a guy got blindsided and punched in the side of the head. The guy that hit him sprinted off into the darkness. The guy went down and never got up. His wife watched it happen and was trying to get him to wake up while the fighting and arguing continued. 30 minutes go by and the guy hasn't moved since being punched. Bar staff have been doing CPR on him for about 15 minutes before emergency services finally arrive and continue. Turns out he was brain dead on impact. They kept him alive somehow until the morning, but turned life support off the following afternoon. The guy was 46 at his local bar and got killed. Heap shit thing to see. I'll never forget that night. The guy that hit him was 19, got charged with murder, and is in jail as we speak. This was when I was in second or third grade, so late 80s. My friend's mom had picked us up from school in her station wagon, and I was on the way back. There were probably six or seven of us kids in the car, and we were stopped at a traffic light across from a homeless shelter, about to get on the interstate. This guy is walking down the street with an armful of chewing tobacco and drops a pack. A homeless guy leaning up against the wall picked it up. There was an angry exchange in which the guy refused to give back the tobacco, so the other guy kicked him and stomped him to death on the sidewalk. I was riding my bike to work when I witnessed this attack. I was the first person to approach, and I was sure this woman was going to die. I heard the truck before I looked, and I watched as she was run over completely with the truck. I watched as both sets of tires ran her over. It was and is the most horrible thing I have witnessed in my life. I was probably 100, 150 feet away, and as soon as he pulled away, I had to have an internal argument with myself about approaching. Like, I didn't want to see a dead mangled person up close, but if there was any chance she was still alive, I didn't want her to be alone. It was probably only a few seconds, but it felt like forever, and then I went over. She was alive and conscious. I tried to comfort her and started calling 911 but she only spoke Spanish, so I wasn't able to really communicate with her. Another woman had seen as well, and she came running over from across the street. She was able to come over and talk with her in Spanish while I called 911. I think she was able to call her some family, since I think we were all uncertain if the woman would live. The ambulance showed up pretty quickly and stabilized her. After she was taken away, I went to work and tried not to think about it. I actively avoided learning anything about the story until now because the uncertainty of whether she died or not allowed me to believe she was okay. I didn't want to know if she died. This post actually prompted me to look up whether she lived or not. And this was the first time I've even tried to look up anything about that day. I'm happy she made it, and I hope she's doing well. Seeing someone try to kill someone changes you. I don't think about that day every day, but it definitely haunts me. A drunk man was pushed down some stairs by the bouncer. Unfortunately, the drunk man was unable to catch himself and instead spun around and landed on the pavement with the back of his head making first contact. He was alive for a little while but quickly succumbed to his wound and was arrested there on the pavement. He was declared dead 15 minutes later in ER after being transported by ambulance. There was no CCTV or clear evidence of malicious intent that would hold up in court and the man was known as a drunk and had no friends or family. It was ruled an accidental death. I had to walk past that spot most days going to work, and will never forget his face. The look of mystified horror, followed by the glassy-eyed slack-jaw expression that came with death. I was the medic that transported the man. I was by his side from the start till the declaration. One of the most visceral experiences of my career thus far. I was 16 driving down the highway in the passenger seat of my mom's car. About 3.30pm, traffic came to a complete halt and we were in the right-hand lane. So as we're creeping along, a semi-truck appears on the shoulder of the highway. The door swung wide open. As we move past, there's a trail of blood down the doorstep onto the concrete, and then leading about 20 feet further down the road. As we crept further, the trail of blood ended with a man lying face up completely covered in blood. There were no police or ambulances there yet. This was on a highway in the suburbs of a major metropolitan area in the U.S., so plenty of people saw before the scene was taken hold of by emergency services. Turns out, the truck driver had a partner with him. They got into an argument, and the passenger stabbed the driver like a dozen times and then escaped. The murderer was caught about an hour and a half away, one state over, two days later. 
I have to imagine that I was about five minutes behind the truck pulling over because the police can be in that spot in about 30 seconds. Being in the passenger seat in the right lane of the highway, I was about 10 feet from the body. Haunting image. Was going to work one day when a van hit a cyclist. Saw the person fly through the air. Looked like a mannequin. I kept talking to the body, but with blood coming from his ears, I knew he was dead. Unfortunately, they never released the name of the victim. I would have liked to visit the grave. Some of the other witnesses were messed up, but I was, and still am, okay with it. I read that one's hearing is the last thing to go. If I am ever in that bad situation again, I will talk more conversationally. I was about 8-9 to nine years old, and we were on vacation in a vacation village. While we were doing checkout with my family, my father was at the desk while we were waiting at the lobby couches. An argument broke out between two guys who were at the lobby bar. I actually don't know what it was about, because it was in another language. One of the guys grabbed a bottle, smashed it, and attacked the other one, hit him in the neck. That guy fell on the floor, and there was blood all over the place. My mother closed my eyes after that, and took us out while other people got involved. Years later, I learned that guy lost his life. I was at the grand opening of a sports bar, the night Manny Pacquiao fought Chris Algieri. The bar was jam-packed beyond belief, so packed that you couldn't get back to your table without shimmying through other patrons, trying not to put your butt on the back of their neck. Anyway, a guy who had paid, entered, and had some drinks went outside to take a smoke break. No smoking allowed in the bar. There was still an incredibly long line to get inside, so he tried to come back in the exit door. The bouncer told him he couldn't and that he would have to wait in line and come back to the main entrance, though he didn't have to pay again. The guy was pissed and tried to push past the bouncer. The bouncer eventually pushed him out the door and locked it. The guy then apparently went back home, grabbed his girlfriend's gun, and came back to the bar. I learned this after the fact, talking to the owner and via news coverage. He waited until someone left out the exit door, snuck inside, and shot the bouncer in the back of the head several times. The bar was so packed that chaos ensued. Almost everyone hit the floor immediately. There were tables, foods, drinks, keys, phones, and people all laying on the floor. Other people ran outside. My buddies and I waited for a few minutes until we knew the coast was clear, and then got the hell out of there. At the time, we didn't know all what had happened. As we exited the bar, we literally had to step over the dead bouncer to get to the door. I was lucky enough to find my phone and keys amid the melee. One of my buddies found his keys, but not his phone. He never got it back. Sadly, that sports bar never really recovered from that incident. It closed down for about a month before reopening, but it never achieved the popularity that it should have due to that incident. In the parking lot of a strip mall in Washington State, a guy walked into a jewelry store and did armed robbery. Plainclothes security guard waited until the robber exited and shot the robber in the back. I was in a car, and I didn't hear the shot, but I did see him fall, and some shoppers gathering around his body. We drove by slowly to see if help was needed. When I saw how fast the pool of blood was spreading, I pretty much knew he would not survive. Was walking home one day, and saw a couple arguing. The dude started walking off away from the girlfriend's car, and apparently she was not happy with that. She proceeds to get in the car and wait about five minutes till he was off down the sidewalk. I was walking on the opposite side of the road as him, and all of a sudden, I see a blur and he goes flying like a rocket. She must have been going at least 60 miles an hour. He flew through the air and hit a tree, died instantly. The lady then screamed out the window at his body and drives away. There was blood smeared all over the crumpled hood, and I'll never forget the sight of his contorted body at the base of the tree. Almost folded in half. I had to talk to the police, and within the hour, they caught her at a car wash, trying to clean the blood and chunks off her hood and grill of her car. I was 16 at the time. When I was 6, my family went to see Sesame Street on Ice Downtown. When we were leaving, a little girl my age was struck by a van and drug across the parking lot. I remember the mother jumping on the windshield, screaming at the driver while the van was still moving. My mom was a nurse and was helping until the ambulance arrived, but she was already dead. I could still remember the screams and the lifeless body of that little girl. This was over 30 years ago. Obviously, a lot of let up to the story, but I'm not going there. My girlfriend was taking her dog for a walk while I showered for work. I'm in the bathroom 
when I hear voices coming from outside. I look out the window, and to my horror, there is my girlfriend talking to her abusive stepfather, who is standing about five inches away from her. I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I knew it wasn't good. Stepfather raises his shotgun, shoots my girlfriend in the face, and then shoves shotgun under his chin and pulls the trigger. Murder suicide. Life's never been the same for me since. I saw a few in Mexico. The most memorable one was the first one I saw while I lived there. I was cleaning out a house with some buddies of mine. A guy was walking down the block. We heard gunshots. I looked out the window and there was the same guy laying out on the sidewalk. A black pickup truck sped by. I think there were four guys on back, all with bandanas covering their faces, all with guns in their hands. The thing that stuck with me is they all looked younger than me. I was 22 at the time. According to the paper that was released right after, he was from out of town, and likely they mistook him for someone else. He was 17. His blood was left on the streets for days. One of my friends said he heard 14 shots, but I only heard 6. I have the whole experience written down, as it was so foreign to me. This was in Alta Moreno. I used to stay up late at night, trying to think of what kind of life would lead those guys to do a drive-by like that. I also wonder about that 17-year-old. I'm sure he had family visiting there. I saw my cousin murdered when I was a kid. We were back in my hometown. He was sitting in his car in front of my aunt's house, and he was gunned down. I was on the porch with his siblings. It was random, but he didn't live the most righteous life, so we honestly never knew the motive, and they never found out who did it. He used to work at a movie theater. I would change the sign near the road in the middle of the night. I saw a taxi pull up to the bus stop. It stayed there for quite some time. That's what caught my attention, was how long it was there for. Saw a dude get out and quickly walk away. A week later, I was changing the sign again, and I heard a voice below asking me to come down. After he showed me his badge, I obliged, and he asked me if I had seen anything weird the weeks before. I replied only that a taxi had sat there for a while, and a guy got out. I had to then go look at lots of mugshots. Turns out I was a sole witness to some poor bastard's murder without even realizing it. Wish I had a better look at the guy so I could get him some justice. When my dad moved to North Hollywood in the 80s, he woke up one morning to some guy getting beaten by three guys, one with a baseball bat, across the street from his apartment. Police were called, but the kid ended up dying on the scene, and my dad watched it all from his bedroom window. I don't remember if he ever learned any more details. Welcome to the neighborhood. When I was a kid, I witnessed a hit and run. An SUV ran into a pedestrian and sped away. I don't think they ever caught the person. The poor girl they hit flew into the air. The SUV passed underneath her and she landed on the road and she died. It was heartbreaking. She couldn't have been over 25 years old. Granted, this wasn't murder, but I just couldn't believe there was a person there one second and then gone the next. It always made me wonder how people could live with themselves after doing that. Then I'd wonder how many people I knew would do the same thing. Eventually, I wondered if I was capable of doing something like that too. All this made me realize is hypotheticals are dumb because we really never are who we think we are. I also appreciate every year I get older. While at a bar, a couple guys got into an argument. The whole thing subsides, then a few hours later, one of them leaves. As the guy is leaving, the other guy he was arguing with earlier runs outside and punches him in the back of the head, killing him instantly. Only other time I've seen someone die was on the highway. Not murder here. Guy jumped off a bridge I was driving under. He had a rope tied off and hanged himself. Got smashed by a truck before he died though. Caused a really big mess. Hell, maybe the rope broke his neck before getting plowed into. I don't know. So I live in a country where it's pretty normal for public buses to steal each other's routes slash schedules slash whatever. When I was eight, I was in one of them buses. I guess my driver was the one acting wrongfully. Along comes another bus. This is early in the morning. Both buses are full. I was going back to school, second grade. The driver of my other bus stops my bus. Both drivers get off to yell at each other. The second driver has a gun, but he is older slash more feeble. So my driver grabs a gun and shoots him once. I saw everything as I was sitting by a window. When the body falls and I could see the red stain, the world goes quiet for me. The last thing I heard was a soft gunshot, 22 caliber maybe. I get off the bus and walk to school 20 to 25 blocks away. 
I don't remember a single thing about it. When I got to school, I was pale and wouldn't react when spoken to. Eventually, I came to and was able to speak normally. And matter of factly, can't stand the noise of fireworks since. Fun fact, my husband was in the other bus and also witnessed everything. Saw my friend got shot in the head and died a few minutes later during a crossfire between her oldest brother and the police. Was very heartbreaking. I still miss her 22 years later. We were playing on a field next to her house and her brother was watching us. He pulled a gun out and started shooting as soon as he saw the police. Five years ago, there was an attempted home invasion at my house when I was 18. I was downstairs watching Top Gear when I heard someone trying to break in the door. My father, military type, very productive, confronted the guy and the guy turned around and shot my dad in the chest with a sawed-off shotgun. My dad was able to fire off a couple shots afterwards, killing him, but my father was already on the ground dead. This is the very short version. First time writing this out. Still surreal to think about. Turned out the guy was a felon with six butcher knives down his pants, presumably trying to find some reason to hurt someone. I consider my father a hero. Most people considered his actions stupid or irresponsible, but you had to know him to understand his mentality. So I don't know what the legality is. Maybe it's considered manslaughter, or I don't know. That's what lawyers are for. I see this happen more than I'd like to admit. I work for a company that puts cameras on utility trucks, mostly garbage trucks. So what will happen is there will be like a two-lane road, and the driver on the back will attempt to cross the road and grab a bin, and either a car coming from the other direction will hit him, or even worse, a car from behind the truck will attempt to pass and hit him. Saw this twice last month. I was in Terminal 2 in Barcelona Airport the morning of March 24th, 2015. There were only three flights leaving the terminal, and we were all delayed due to fog. 150 people boarded German Wings, flight 9525. 30 minutes before we boarded our flight, although I didn't see it happen, we were the last people to see them alive. The first officer crashed the plane into the French Alps, killing himself and murdering the 149 people on board. It will haunt me for the rest of my life. I live in Syria, and I've been forced to leave my house due to ISIS attacks on our city. My family and I live for two days under light artillery between ISIS soldiers and regime-affiliated troops that lived in the neighborhood. As I looked through the window, I saw an ISIS soldier running with a rocket launcher, screaming. Then there was a hole in the building in front of him. The three men inside were blown to pieces. He quickly got shot in the chest and laid on the ground, dead. Oddly enough, and lucky for me, this incident didn't do permanent damage to my well-being. I speak of it with the family sometimes, to remember how we miraculously managed to survive. Bus in Poland with big side mirrors went up on the curb a bit when attempting to pull into the bus stop lay-by at the tram station. Mirror took out a guy waiting for the bus, slammed him in the head, and killed him right there. Bus driver tried to drive away. The bus passenger tried to stop him. The bus ran over someone rude, but I don't know if they died too. Our team had already started moving and left the station. We dialed 112, and apparently police and ambulances got there pretty fast. I don't know what happened to the bus driver. All of the dozens or so murders I've seen in person have been when I'm visiting my hometown in Mexico. They've all more or less panned out the same from what I saw. Some bickering, which leads to someone pulling out a knife or a gun and killing the other person. And all of these occurred in fairly crowded areas. Later that week, I would find out it was organized crime related. Whoever got done in was in hostile territory or under suspicion of messing around on their turf or members. The first day I moved to the town I grew up in, three years old, I went to Burger King and saw two men get into an argument while I was in line, having to do with gang rivalry, I believe, and it escalated to the point where one of the men pulled out a gun and within another minute or two, it had been fired off and the other guy was on the ground bleeding out. My mom told me to look away, but that's the most impactful few peaks I've ever snuck, and those few images will always stick with me. I was standing at a crosswalk. The guy next to me started walking in. It was pre-dawn, and without looking so, did I. The guy behind me grabbed my collar and yanked me back to the sidewalk. I spun around pissed off. The guy in front of me got hit by a car, speeding through the intersection. I freaked out and called 911, but the guy died before the ambulance got there. The guy that pulled me back was gone. White guy, sunglasses, tan coat, 
Guy that got hit was fit as hell, wearing a gray windbreaker. Me and my friends were on the bus. When the door opened, a guy ran in and pulled someone off the bus by his hair. Once outside, with one smooth and clean motion, slit his neck. It seemed like a professional hit, but I don't know for sure. We rushed to help him, but he died within seconds. Another time I was in Guatemala, and there was a guy on a motorcycle in front of us. Another car pulled up to him and ran him off the road. We saw him get launched off the road onto rocks. My brother-in-law went to get help for him. When he came back, his clothes were covered in blood and said nothing. He talked to the police and EMTs, and the rest of our car ride was silent. The final time, I was asleep. It was about 3 a.m., and I heard shouting and footsteps. I went outside to check on it. It was really loud, so my next-door neighbor also heard it. He works at the ER. When I got there, he was helping a man who had been stabbed several times around the abdomen. I called 911 and applied pressure to one of the stab wounds. When the EMTs arrived and took them away, I asked the neighbor if we saved the guy's life. He told me that nothing was for sure, but that he didn't think that guy was going to make it. I had the opportunities to support NATO activities with Kosovo. There was an internal struggle going on, and I was given specific instructions not to interfere with local life and not to deploy a weapon unless fired on. We weren't supposed to allow our presence to be noticed. The team I was assigned hooked up with NATO people, and we were being escorted to the location they wanted us. En route, we went through a market, and there was a soldier with a gun who was yelling at this woman and child. I don't know what was being said, I don't speak the language. The soldier opened fire and killed the woman, the child, and a few others. We took cover and waited for him to leave. I was told he was KLA, and the KLA were ethnic cleansing Serbians. Within days, the US Navy was launching tomahawk strikes at the area. Not exactly murder, maybe. I guess you can decide. I'll try to make it a fast one. I was a medic in Afghanistan, and a few people got injured in an IED blast, one of which was a kid, around 14 to 15 years old. We had limited resources, so sometimes you can only save a certain number of people those who are most likely to be saved. The immediate casualties come first, and sometimes you have to let others who are too far gone just kind of sit there, I guess. You make them comfortable and talk to them, but there's not much you can do. Anywho, the reason I equated to murder is when we saw what we had in numbers, we realized we could only save one, a guy that had lost quite a bit in the blast, and there wasn't much we could do for the kid. So I gave him some pain meds to help him relax and help him sleep. And he did. He went to sleep and never got to wake up. It was a murder in the grand scheme, depending on your viewpoint, but I truly felt like I was the one dealing the final blow, even if it was for mercy. He was a local. I never got to learn his name or anything about him, apart from the short time I spent with him before working on the other casualties. My neighborhood is pretty wild, so there are probably even better stories, but the one I remember is this. It was about five years ago. This gang leader man, he was a big deal, mafia connections and stuff, had just got released from prison. I don't know much about the backstory, but he had some dirt with a nightclub owner that happened to be my neighbor. The gang attacked the nightclub that night. Tables are thrown off windows, fire alarms went off, and we obviously heard gunshots back to back. Me and my dad rushed to the balcony, very dumb of us, and we saw this naked guy with only a towel around his waist who was walking out of a hammam. Hammam is like a public bath. I'm Turkish, it's common here. The man ran to the nightclub, I guess he was just curious, and then boom, I saw the exact moment he got shot from his chest. We later found out he was the only one who died that night. Nobody inside the nightclub was harmed. While driving for work, I went down a back road to reach a remote oil field location. While driving in, I saw a vehicle parked on the side with the vehicle just pulling away. Didn't really think anything of it. After finishing my job and leaving, I saw the vehicle was still parked on the side and running, but no one was in the driver's seat. Though it was kind of weird and it was also minus 30 out that day, so I stopped to see what's up. Found the poor fella bound and gagged in the back seat with a gunshot wound to the head. Southern France, Corsica, in the late 1990s. I was in a bar with my girlfriend at the time, having a drink. We were inside, but there were also tables outside in the narrow medieval valley. Suddenly, two gunshots ring out. Unlike elsewhere in Europe, guns are not that usual in Corsica, 
so people take cover and dive under tables. Music stops and such, but there is no huge drama. People are kind of used to this kind of stuff. I looked at the barman. He shrugs. I head for the door to see what's going on and step out in the alley and step out into the alley. In front of me lies a guy, no more than 20 years old. He's in a fetal position, very peacefully looking, but he is clearly dead. His brains are all over the wall. All tables are empty, also in the restaurant across the alley. More and more people come out of the bar. We all look at the dead guy. There is a clear sense of let's get out of here. I find my girlfriend and we leave. Later, we hear that the dead guy was a waiter. He intervened in an argument a customer had with his girlfriend, told them to keep it down. Customer got up, pulled out a gun, and shot the waiter in the head. I still sometimes think about how he laid there, so still and peaceful, and it made me realize how quick it can all end for you, just like that. I didn't actually witness the murder-suicide, but I saw the direct aftermath seconds later. I was six years old at my babysitter's house after school. The husband came home drunk and demanded he speak with her in the backyard. A little bit afterwards, their dog is freaking out and demanding to come inside. I went out back and the dog led me to them. The husband shot my babysitter and then himself. She was gone, but he still had labored breathing before dying in front of me. It's still one of my most vivid memories 21 years later. This was not technically a murder, although I felt it should have been considered one. A drunk slash drug guy had been kicked out of a pug I was standing outside of. He tried to walk back in a couple of times, but the security guard on the door pushed him back. On the third attempt, the guard punched him hard in the face. The drunk guy stumbled back and fell to the footpath. The back of his head hit first. He was either unconscious or dead at the moment. While the security guard stood there and just smugly looked at the guy on the ground. No attempt to call for medical help or just check on the guy. His equally drunk slash high girlfriend tried to wake him up and pulled him up. I went to stop her, but she was off her face and gave me a whack as she pulled her boyfriend up while blood and brain poured out the back of his head. I went and grabbed a cop and gave a statement the next day, but no one seemed to be too interested into looking into the guard's excessive use of force. In the 1980s, I was touring the ship Queen Mary, which was permanently docked at Long Beach, California. They were hosting a motorcycle show on board that day, and the idiots had hired the Hells Angels as security. Open staircases were attached to the ship on the outside, allowing one to climb from the pavement level to entryways at any level of the ship. I was standing on the lowest landing of the staircase, about 10 feet above ground, when the rival Mongols Motorcycle Club showed up. Of course, a brawl broke out immediately below me with knives, fists, and chains. I saw a Hell's Angel stab a Mongol in the back, just as a string of police cars were coming over the causeway to break it up. I read in the paper that night that the Mongol had been stabbed in the kidney and had died. Surprisingly, it was the only fatality of the brawl. I saw a guy push his passenger, an old man, out of a car. The car was screeching speeding round a corner. The door flings open and the driver very clearly pushed the old man out. Not the greatest thing for a 10 year old to witness. The even weirder thing was that as I stood there in shock, while the old man was completely still in the road, a weird man walking past me chuckled and said, it wasn't you was it? Then chuckled again. It hasn't affected my life, but think about it every now and then. A couple of years ago when I was still in college, I was coming back from my dorm room at night when I heard two to three loud pops and someone screaming in pain. I went up to my room and out the window saw a handful of cops blocking off the street around the corner from my building. Turns out the campus police received an anonymous tip that a man was armed outside the dorm down the street from mine. When they arrived, the man took out a knife and charged one of the officers. He ignored the officer's warning, so the officer ended up shooting him. They took him to the hospital, but he died on the way there. It was later found out that the anonymous tip actually came from the man, who was actually a student. It was declared a suicide by police. I think that's what it's called. So technically, not murder. But it led to some pretty terrible events in the weeks that followed, before the official report came out.